Good afternoon. As I mentioned in the write-up, in the blog post, I'm going to give you a tour of this project and show you some of the difficulties we'll have in modeling it. And I'm going to hint at some of the solutions we might use or some of the techniques. This is the stool shown in perspective view. It's, um, it's a shop stool. If you look at the John Cassay book, he will tell you that this cushion seat is filled with chicken feathers. I didn't model those, but I've modeled the cushion seat along with the little buttons, nails that are used to hold the seat in place. And if we look a little closer, we'll see that the top of the seat or the seat itself has been given a little shape. The legs are splayed into the seat and I'll show you in a moment the, the legs uh, go all the way through, the tenons go all the way through. The rungs similarly are mortised and tenoned into the legs and the legs are turned and in typical shaker fashion the rungs enter along a score line that's made by the lathe. I, by the way, when I drew this, I accentuated or exaggerated this score line a little bit. On the lathe, you probably wouldn't score it that deeply. But just for visual purposes, I scored it a little more heavily than you might on, on, the, uh, on the lathe. Okay, let's look at this piece by piece. First of all, I'm going to go to parallel projection view and front view. And I'll fill the screen here. In the book, in the documentation in the John Cassay book, he describes this angle between the horizontal here and the splay of this leg as being 80 degrees. It's a very misleading angle because what it is, it's the angle between a horizontal line and a line that's projected from this 3D image to a 2D plane that is essentially the red-blue plane in SketchUp. This leg doesn't lie on the red-blue plane. In fact, it, um, it is splayed from the in the red-blue plane and in the green-blue plane. The projected angle on the plane is 80 degrees, but the actual splay of this leg is more like 76. You'll see that next week when we begin to draw this thing. All right, let me take and get rid of some things here. You'll see there are four legs. They're different, by the way. These two are the same. These two are the same, but they're different one to the other. So they're, they're not exactly mirror images. And that's because of the way the rungs sit in the legs. You have a high rung here and a high rung here, a low rung here and a low rung here. When you enter this leg, you enter with a high rung, low rung. When you enter this leg, you enter with a low rung, high rung. So that makes these two legs different, but they're opposite ones the same. Okay, so that's something we have to keep in mind when we model it. Obviously, there's a lot of complex or compound cuts on this leg. As you look at it from the front, in order for the seat to be flat, both the bottom of the leg and the top of the leg have to have a compound cut that brings it level with the surface of the top. Let's just bring the seat in. And look at that. You notice that the legs have tenons on them that come through these mortise, uh, you know, through mortises uh, into the seat. 
if you want to make this in the shop, you could either use the technique that's shown in the John Cassay book, which is they drill a hole here and put a peg through the leg a short distance. Glue in this day and age will probably suffice for this joint. The other thing you could do is cut a little slot down this leg and wedge it in here. That would require you make the the mortise um, a wedged mortise splay you know in other words that the mortise the hole coming out would be bigger than the hole entering so that you could put the uh, tenon in there and then use a wedge to uh, splay the edges apart that would make a very very tight joint especially if you use glue in addition and you would never get that apart but I don't think it's necessary with today's glue technology, but I'll leave that up to you to model the way you would like. Right now we're just going to concern ourselves with the seat, the legs, and the rung. Okay. The um, other thing I wanted to point out here is that if you take away the seat here and The rungs go into the legs. They essentially form a tenon and a mortise. And the rungs, if I take away the legs and look at them, and I'll look at this from the front view. The rungs are, have a little curve that extends into the hole in the legs. And the purpose of that is, is to wedge the rungs into the legs. Modeling that is a, little, is a little tricky because if you look at the hidden geometry, these are, this is a, a straight cylinder, this part of it. But the leg actually comes out to about here. Let me just show the leg here. Notice that the leg comes out to about here. That means all of the geometry around this face of the leg is going to be fairly complex geometry. And the intersect with model tool in SketchUp does a reasonable job of creating the edges you need. But in some cases, it leaves faces off, and once in a while, it may even leave a line off. So there's a fair amount of cleanup, and I'll show you how to do that. The other tricky part is that when you model using the intersect with faces, when you model the seat, and I'll bring the seat on, And let me use the x-ray view here. When you use the intersect with faces, what you'll get is you'll get this outer circle here. Actually, it's more like an ellipse because of the angle here. And you'll get the bottom circle on the bottom. What the intersect tool won't give you are all of these vertical lines here. Those you have to add. And I'll show you a trick for adding it to one hole and not having to worry about the others but just doing some copying. All right. The other the last thing we we're going to do is um, get rid of the seat and the legs and let me get rid of the hidden geometry. The last thing we're going to do is model the seat uh, cushion. I'll bring that on here. This was modeled using the um, arc tool, obviously the circle tool, and also the follow me tool. There's some tricks to that, and there's some, these buttons were all put on using the uh, follow me tool and the repeat feature of the follow me tool. Follow, uh, not the follow me tool, I'm sorry the rotate copy tool. I misspoke there. It's the rotate copy tool. 
So we'll show you how to do that. And then putting this little decorative edge around here. That's not too tricky, but there's, there's a few techniques that we will cover when we do that. This is a fairly complex project. Uh, I would call it intermediate to advanced. If you're not comfortable with this kind of thing, you may want to go to the American Woodworker TV site and look at either the beginners or the advanced or intermediate, I guess it's called, uh, beginners and intermediate webinars. The intermediate deals with curves, whereas the um, the beginners deals with mostly orthogonal and straight line uh, modeling. So whatever your level of comfort, if you're comfortable with this kind of thing, you'll find this interesting. If not, you want to go back and get some skills that you might not have. Let me just uh, get rid of, rid of the um, seat and the legs. Just look at the um, seat cover. We've actually modeled the fact that it comes down over the edges and gets tacked into the uh, top and it's cushioned. If you can imagine there are chicken feathers inside that cushion but I'm not going to model those. If you wish, have at it. Alright, so I'll see you next week when we actually begin to model this. And By the time we're done you'll end up with a complete SketchUp model with dimensions. And you can compare them to the John Cassay book, the name of which is The Book of Shaker Furniture by John Cassay. And this particular model you'll find on page 222. The John Cassay book, by the way, is just, there's just, it's a gift to woodworkers. And there are a number of 2D drawings in there that you can model and sketch up and build. And the furniture is shaker, and it's very, very elegant furniture. Okay, we'll see you next week. Until then, goodbye.